one of my website's traffic grew by 300% by simply using the method that I'll share with you today. And it's super simple. I will take you through it step by step so you can start doing it on your own website today. And my website had been sitting for a while, so the content had slowly decayed. And one month ago, I decided to change that. While the traffic numbers might seem low to you, it doesn't change the fact that this works for all the websites out there. And the process we'll go through is the content optimization. And I'll share my SOP, my standard operation procedure for when I optimize my content. You see, Google gives every website an overall content score based on how your content performs. And by performing, I mean in the search results. So the more clicks and the more traffic you get, the better is a piece of content actually performing. And we want all of our content to perform the best possible. First, we need to find the content piece we want to optimize. Then we need to do some research where we gather information. We need to optimize the content and then we need to publish it on WordPress. And the first thing we'll do is to go into Google Search Console click on search results and then compare in the date function and then compare the last six months to the six months prior to that. Click on pages and sort by the biggest negative amount of clicks. So now you have the pages that has lost the most traffic during the last six to 12 months. And here you need to start with the first one basically if you haven't optimized it recently. So let's take the first one and then you need to define what is the target keyword for this specific blog post and then go to Google and search for that. Because now we have the content piece and we'll start the content research. And the process that I just went through now in Google Search Console is also what you do when you do content pruning. And I'll leave a link to content pruning that is a video that I've made for that up here. So you can go and watch that after. But back to the research part, because once you have searched on Google, open the top three ranking articles for your target keyword, and then we need to analyze what they are doing. Because the thing that happens when content decays is that it slowly becomes irrelevant. That means that either your facts are off, you're not covering the topic entirely anymore, or you're simply writing something that's wrong and that's what we need to fix. We need to cover all the holes that you have in your content and we need to improve it. So by opening the top three ranking articles, you know now what is working in Google. Why are these ranking and that's what we need to figure out. So what I like to do is to look at all the headings. And for this, you can use the Chrome extension detailed, collect all the headings in a document. And then later on, we'll compare all these headings to your own content so we can see what we're missing. But not only do you need to collect all the headings, you also need to look at what elements does these three articles have that you don't. So you need to look into all the visual elements, either using tables, lists, specific images, maybe an infographic, and then take note of this because you want to do the same or something even better. So you're sure that you are fulfilling the same requirements that these three articles are. And then we need to provide some information gain to the search results so we'll rank higher, hopefully. Remember to also look at what links they have in their cards and both external links, but also internal links. They might be linking to supporting content that is supporting the content you're writing about and you don't have those supporting content pieces. Then you want to write those as well so you cover the cluster entirely. The next thing you'll do is that you'll go back into Google Search Console, then you'll filter on your URL and then look at all the queries. And now we need to find all the queries where you get impressions, but not that many clicks. So often the CTR below 1% and even below 2% you want to look into as well. Because this means that either you don't cover the topic at all or you don't cover it well enough. Sometimes there are also questions in the queries that you can add to an FAQ section, but it's important to collect all of this information. There will also be a lot of different variations of your keyword and just disregard that unless you see a different type of target keyword has more impressions than the target keyword you have chosen, then you might want to change to that keyword. And the last thing you'll do is that you'll go into either ChatGPT or Gemini, and then you'll ask ChatGPT or Gemini to compare your website to the top three ranking websites and then tell you what are you missing compared to these three websites, for example. And this is still part of the research phase. So now we have manually compared your content to the top three ranking. So you can see what headings are you missing to cover, infographics, basically visual elements. We have all the queries that you get impressions for, but you don't get any clicks. And then we have now asked AI as well to help you figure out what you're missing. So now we have a bunch of resources that we can now improve our content with. And this is where we go into the writing phase or the optimization phase. And what I like to do is to always use a tool like Phrase or Market Muse to write my content. 
because then you have all the research on the right side and you have your content that you're actually writing on the left side. So you have it in one view and you get even more research on what you've already done. And we'll start with your title and meta description because if you have a CTR that's below 3%, then we need to optimize this. And the way we do that is to again, look at the search results. What are other people using for their blog post title? And then you need to get inspired by this and write something similar. It doesn't have to be one-to-one, -one, but something similar because this is obviously working. And often you will see a pattern throughout all the different titles in the search results. And if you can somehow include some personal experience in the title, that's even better. And the same goes for the meta description as well. These elements is what we can work on in order to improve the CTR. Even though Google does also parsely index your content based on sections, but these two are globally for your blog post. So start there and then take a note of when it is that we're optimizing the blog post, when you are publishing it, and then we go back to Google Search Console in 14 days to 30 days and then check whether your changes has actually made an improvement or not. Next, you want to optimize the intro. And here I like to use the SPEAR framework from Jamie IF. So basically what you want to do is that you want to hit on some pain points and show that you have expertise to solve those pain points. So immediately as the reader goes through your blog post and read your intro, then they can relate to the pain point. They can see that you have expertise to help them with this pain point and then you have them hooked. Then you just need to deliver in the content phase. And as long as you cover all the subjects that you can see other websites are covering and you do it well enough, so it's easy to read and you add your own experience and you're very well on the way. So this is also the time where you will add the missing headings, you'll add text to it, but also fact check your old content. Is there something new within the topic that you need to optimize the current content with? Maybe something is obsolete and you need to remove it or something similar. It's important to go through your old content as well. You don't have to just delete it and start over. There's often a lot of usable things. So when you write the content and you optimize your old content, remember to bring in expertise and experience. I did this, so I will tell you to do this, for example. I experienced X, so you should do Y. It's so important to have these sentences and then write to the reader. It's important when the reader reads this, that they feel has been written to them. And there's a little trick here. When you write your content, then imagine that you're writing an email to your target group. And if you don't know your target group, then sit down and define it first because it really helps you in writing the content the most specific way. And don't go to the conclusion that you just want to hit everyone with your content because that's not possible. If you try to target everyone, you target basically no one. Find a target group and then target that with your content. Next up, you want to improve readability as well. I like to maximum have 2.5 lines per section of text, and then I go to a new section of text. Otherwise, I feel it's a block of text that I need to read, and especially on mobile as well. It's just a little tip that I do, but you, of course, do what you want. Sometimes a block of text is good for the target group. Other times, they just want it easy to read. And for your headings, make sure you make them descriptive. It's so important that once you read the heading, then you immediately know what the content is about. And this goes for each section. Make the heading super descriptive because then it'll also rank better in the search results. You can also add an FAQ section to your content if it makes sense because an FAQ creates a good experience if you have a target group that just wants a fast question answer technique. So they have a question, they just want a quick answer. They will go to your FAQ and then they will check it through and get their answers. So that's just a quick, good way to create a good user experience and also encourage them to engage with your website because they go to the FAQ section. And in here, you can also use phrase, for example, to see all the questions being asked about your topic so you can fill them out in your FAQ section. But you can also check the search results if you're not using any tools and then go to the people also ask section and see the questions being asked there. Sometimes they're not super relevant to your topic, but other times there are really some great topics and you can always open up a topic to get more topics. And here you can actually also use the detailed Chrome extension to export a certain amount of people also ask questions and then get them into an Excel sheet so you can get an overview of them. Lastly, what I check is that I ensure that my images are original and this is super important. It's definitely important for your rankings to ensure that you have original images. A recent case study done by SEMrush showed that it's one of the most important signals to send to Google, but also the reader that you have original images so you bring some information gain to the search results. So do everything you can. If you can't, then of course you can't do anything, 
But if there's a slight chance that you can, then go and pursue it because it's really valuable. And once you're through all of this and you have written the content, then you have to publish it on your website. It could be a WordPress website or whatever you're using. And if you're using an SEO plugin like RankBath, for example, then make sure that once you enter your FAQ section, that it is saved as an FAQ schema. So it ranks better in Google as well, because then Google will pick out the questions and show in the search results as well. This is super important. Lastly, once you're done with this as well, that you've published your newly blog post to WordPress, then you can go into Google Search Console and ask Google Search Console to re-index the blog post because now it's entirely new. You don't have to do this because Google will do it automatically at some point. But if you're impatient like me, then you can definitely do it. Just don't overdo it because that's a bit of misuse of the function and it's not a good signal to send to Google. And I know this is a lot. So if you want it as a checklist, just comment down below and I'll make sure to send it to you. And I mentioned briefly about content pruning in the beginning. So you should definitely go and watch that right now so you can improve your content score even more. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one.